Hello, welcome to my series about Chopin mazurkas. Today we finally arrived to the last mazurka published during Chopin's life. Mazurka in C sharp minor, opus 63, number 3. And uh, surprisingly, it's not a very complicated uh, mazurka. Uh, I think our first thinking usually when we when we hear, oh, this is the last mazurka published by the composer, then probably we think, oh, that must be very, very deep, very difficult to understand, very complex, very, very complicated. On the contrary, it's one of the easiest ones. Of course, it has some inner message. It, it, we can find some things, but the, from the compositional way and point of view, this is a very easy music. Left hand, all the time, has the, the rhythm of Polish Kujawiak, so the Polish uh, sl slow dance. And the right hand has a very simple, well, not that simple, I will explain it uh, a little bit in, in a little later, but a very, a, well, a, our first impression when we hear it is a very simple melody we, which we can sing immediately. Part B, but part B is still, I mean, it's not really part B, but it's its another phrase of part A, let's say, okay. Uh, but this is still the melody. again. It's very, it's very short, so that I, I played it f um, f complete because I, it's very short, so we have time to do it. Um, now let's analyze it. Um, it's simple, and uh, of course, um, it's very strange for us, I think, because when we compare this mazurka to mazurkas opus 56, opus 50, opus 41, opus 59, well, is it the same period? It doesn't sound like that. Extremely simple. You know, we have the very similar, um, very similar thing in Beethoven's life when he approached his later period of life. He suddenly wrote Sonata Le Zadier, Sonata Opus Opus eighty one A, and this sonata comparing to other sonatas is is simple um, so maybe maybe that's normal for the composer well I don't know but definitely Chopin think Chopin is here thinking that maybe it's too much of of 
complicated music or he just felt to write a very simple melody. Okay, but let's analyze it now. The beginning. The beginning is very mysterious because it starts from three notes which they don't belong to melody. Definitely not. Because melody Melody starts from this note and it goes up, goes down and up again and it's like a question. And then it, we have the silence, nobody answer, so the, this question is repeated again. No answer again, so then there is a, like a statement but based on the material from these two questions and based on the same rhythm. This question the rhythm is long note and then pa 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 four short notes and this is very important so long and ta 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 second time and then the statement based on the same so long long and ta 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 and the second time here the left hand is changing and uh, and the, in this moment, the second time when we have this phrase, the left hand is making a modulation. What is the modulation? If, if you are not a musician, I, I will explain in a very few simple words. Modulation is simply changing the key, so changing the, the world. Or we can say if we are in a big building, we are changing the room. We are, so the modulation is the door. We open the door and we go into another room. Uh, usually it happens in the left hand because left hand has uh, chords, um, so colors, and uh, we need to change the chord to change the harmony and to, to approach a different key. So here what the left hand is doing is changing the same melody at the second time and it makes right hand uh, jump up so the left hand is saying hey no we are in a different key so it's just pushing right hand and the right hand is going up to heaven but it but it's still playing the same melody um, and okay but what about these three notes at the beginning well nobody knows <laughs> we don't know yet yet this is very important statement yet because later in this mazurka we will find the answer but at the beginning definitely as i said it's not connected with melody so i as a as a performer try to separate this because if i if i wouldn't do it that would sound like a melody but it's not so and then when we have the question, uh, I was working on it quite a lot uh, and think how to interpret it. And I think the best way is to make a diminuendo uh, on this phrase to make it disappear. So to change the touch uh, more and more and more delicate. A second time. And then statement. The second melody, the second melody, just listen. The same rhythm, tam, ta 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 tam. Long and four short notes. But then, immediately after that, we have sh four short notes. So Chopin is writing a piece a little bit like Beethoven, uh, working with the short motifs, which he used earlier in the team. But what is interesting here, this the second melody, the short motif, is coming too early. It's too early. It's too early. It should be... Right? 
ta 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 So, but it is... And again, and here, the end of this phrase is extremely important. Only two bars. I, I, I would like you to remember this motif because it's it, it's coming back again and again and again in this piece and it, it's quite important for uh, understanding the, the structure of this piece. So what is this? We have actually uh, one repeated note and then another note. So three times, so you know, like in... Like in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, we can call it the Beethoven's motif, but uh, just for, uh, not to connect it with Beethoven, I think, but just for us to have this kind of connection, to remember it um, every time, uh, whenever it, it appears in the piece. So, and then again... The second time this phrase has a very beautiful ending. Chopin is making a variation on this. We have before we had the second time we have uh, and again the Beethoven motif. And then this, there is a part B. So to sum it up, it starts from three mysterious notes. Then we have question, question, and then the answer. But, well, no, it's not really the answer because I think there is nobody to answer because we, we, we wait for the answer. So probably this question is just a rhetoric question. And then there is a statement of the same person who earlier asked these questions. Then it repeats again left hand modulation and then the right hand jumps up then we have the second motif with the motif with second phrase with the motif which is too early and which ends in the Beethoven's uh, motif and then it it's repeated again but with a slightly different very beautiful ending <laughs> so very silent and it's interesting because the right hand has a, a rhythm of Polish folk dance Mazur but left hand doesn't left hand has a like a walking it's, it's the imitation So for me, it's a little bit because we have Soto Ocha here, so very far, far, far away. For me, it's like uh, it's like Chopin is well, it's a symbol of Poland being far away. And now there is a lot of time since Chopin last time visited Poland, and he is losing hope that he will ever be able to visit it again. So this is like a recalling. Uh, dancing but Chopin is wondering do I remember how to dance do I remember how they play it's so it's been so long foggy so that's for me this moment to the beginning 
but the beginning is a little different than than it was at the beginning of the piece. What is different? Of course, I think you'll, you'll hear that there is no silence after the question. So finally, there is an answer. <sighs> the answer is, I think, it's it, it you can hear it the question and the answer a question and answer and question and answer. so this is actually symbolic and very important unfortunately well for me the answer only three notes and every time the same and it sounds for me like no. The answer is no. Only three notes, do you remember, at the beginning of the piece? Yeah, this is connection. The, now we understand the beginning. This is very interesting. But the answer is no. So what can the question be? This is interesting. Uh, my imagination, it's, it's absolutely subjective. But it helps me with interpretation, and I can share it with you because that's that's why I'm doing these videos. Um, when I interpret this piece, I actually imagine uh, Chopin missing his country very much and asking himself, "Will I ever visit my homeland?" So it's been so long that I didn't visit. Will I? Will I ever visit Poland? And then the statement, oh, I miss my country so much. Will I ever visit? Modulation and rock. It's so beautiful there, and I cannot visit it. I would like to dance. Here, right? Beethoven's motif. It sounds to me like, oh, you will never ever visit your country. And here we have the answer. Mm, it's very touching in a way. Uh, so, no. Answer no. And then this is changing. It's, I hear, I feel a little bit more hope. Then yes, 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 I will, I will visit it. I know I will. And then the Beethoven's motif again, which says no. And after that magic happens. We have the same melody. We don't have questions anymore. So Chopin uh, give up questions. It's because there was already many times no, so there is no point asking questions again. Instead, we have a canon. So we have a melody, the statement melody, so oh, how I miss or how I would love to see my country, played in two voices. And then the Beethoven's motif ends the whole of It will never happen. That's it. Uh, this this dialogue is very interesting. This canon we had it before in Opus 56, number two. If you watched my video about this mazurka, you remember the dancing uh, dancing couple, um, the woman who is trying to escape and the man who is trying to catch her. Um, Mm -hmm. 
and so on. And then I uh, was um, saying um, and complaining that too bad we don't have three hands because we should have three hands to have the left hand uh, playing, you know, the, the, the accompaniment. Here, there it was impossible, but here Chopin managed to to keep the left hand going. It's absolutely incredible. And then to put two voices. How we do it technically? Well, the, the lower voice is split between two hands. So just listen. question and answer no. That's the end and now let me play it for you again from the beginning. Thank you very much for watching. I invite you to all my previous videos about all mazurkas. Well, it's hard to believe, but I managed to make them all. And I still plan to do the videos about posthumous mazurkas, but they are different. Um, they are not prepared uh, for publishing. So Chopin as a perfectionist, he was always preparing very carefully his pieces. And all the posthumous mazurkas, even though they are beautiful, but they are different. And I can feel that Chopin didn't want to publish, or there are three mazurkas which he composed after this one, and he just didn't have time to finish them. So we will focus on them soon. Thank you very much, and see you again.